The Logical Thinking Processes, presented by Bill Detmer. Part 6. The Prerequisite Tree. So now, Bill, we've seen the future reality tree, which helped us to confirm that, this, the, um, that we uh, would go in the right direction mm -hmm. to the goal and that we would not create a new problem by trying to apply a, the new solution we found. Mm -hmm. uh, this doesn't tell us how to do it. No. That, that is absolutely true. We know what to do, we just haven't figured out exactly how to do it yet. Uh, the logical thinking process <coughs> provides a very useful tool for doing that called the prerequisite tree. At one time there were two tools for execution, prerequisite tree and transition tree. The prerequisite tree was originally intended to do no more than identify obstacles to implementation and come up with alternatives to uh, overcome those obstacles. But, uh, and the transition tree was intended to provide the step-by-step -step, uh, instructions for how to do the execution. <clears throat> I found over the course of 10 years that the transition tree was uh, not really a very useful tool. Uh, it took a lot of time to construct. Most people didn't want to do it. When they got to the overcoming of the obstacles, they were ready to go directly into implementation. Uh, and they started trying to put some of the implementation actions into the prerequisite tree, even though they had no obstacles. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried for a few years to, to reverse that tendency, and I finally gave up fighting it and said, okay, if you don't like the transition tree, I'm not going to make you do a transition tree. What we'll do is we'll take some of the functions that a transition tree was supposed to perform and we'll incorporate them into the prerequisite tree. I call this a more robust kind of prerequisite tree. It not only overcomes a few selected obstacles, but it also includes all of the critical actions and activities that must be completed to implement the plan, uh, whether they have an obstacle or not and it puts those in sequence along with the overcoming of the obstacles so that what you end up with is what amounts to a project activity network of tasks that must be completed to implement the injection. In point of fact, if it's a complicated injection, you could manage it as a project with a cost schedule and performance uh, monitoring system. Uh, you could actually use critical chain project management to do this effectively. Mm -hmm. And if there are multiple injections that need prerequisite trees, maybe four or five, uh, the system owner can use uh, a combination of prerequisite trees uh, in the same way uh, they would to do multi-project management and stagger the resources out so that there are no conflicts and all of the uh, prerequisite trees would be completed and the injections would all be implemented without conflict. So I said, don't need a tree, transition tree anymore. If you build a robust prerequisite tree, most people are professional enough to be able to know what they need to do in each of those task areas, and they can go ahead and execute from there. It makes the implementation a lot quicker. Okay. I have a question about the obstacle that you are mentioning mm -hmm. in the prerequisite tree. Uh, the obstacles are what would prevent the implementation of the solution. Yes. So if you had a, a, a particular injection that called for you to say to install a new, uh, a, a new computer system, yes. uh, you would say, well, what are the obstacles to that? Well, the obstacle is there are several different candidates. We haven't chosen which one. Uh, we don't know which is the best one. So to overcome that, you would come up with what's known as an intermediate objective, to do some sort of a selection process. Well, in order to do a selection process, you have to have criteria established. So, just because there, uh, there is no obstacle to that, that task still has to be performed, mm -hmm. and that means you would have to determine what the criteria are. So, the, uh, the criteria for the, the determination of the criteria would take place first, and it would then lead you to the selection, which is overcoming the obstacle that you don't have a choice for what to implement. 